Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. In this video, I'm going to summarize the work we did on our Friday project, Listed, which is an app that will allow users to create, share, and watch lists of YouTube uh, channels. And uh, today was all about configuration and setup. Um, we first started by looking at some uh, PRs and issues that had been opened up. So uh, this was a PR opened up by Paolo that added issue templates to the GitHub repo. So uh, if you've ever been on a Git repo, or GitHub repo, and you went, you go to open an issue, if you've ever seen a UI that looks like this, so it gives you specific types of issues that you can open, uh, that is done by creating a dot github folder and then an issue template directory and inside of that you can create your different issue templates and you can have their description their uh, all, all the stuff so palo set that up for us um and we merged it in and now when someone opens up a new issue uh it, it actually guides them through it and it's even it's even cooler it's, it's cool it's really cool check it out so <laughs> let's say i want to open a new issue and it is a bug report uh not only do we get to choose the type now we have custom fields. So uh, within the issue template, we describe we want a description, we want a section for screenshots, a section describing the reproduction, a section where they can put in all of their logs. So within your issue template, you can get really custom with like custom fields and stuff like that. So uh, big thanks to Palo for, for opening this. And now if you open an issue on the repo, You'll, you'll get to pick and choose one of these. And al al also, we can add new issue templates. So uh, right now, we just have bug report and feature request. Um, we could think of other things and add the templates for those as well. Uh, so thanks, Paolo, for that. Uh, next up, uh, uh, Halfer Ivan, who is the creator of TypeSafe i18n, which is the library we use for internationalization, uh, they made a PR against our repo. Uh, so they had some suggestions for better ways of handling uh, language detection on the server side and kind of like swap some of the code around. Uh, so we merged it and it, and it works. Uh, so they updated the local, the locals types instead of passing a string array of all of the uh, requested locales. Uh, now we are detecting the locale in that first server side uh, route. Um, we're also including the language in the HTML template. And uh, this, uh, detector is now happening in hooks.server instead of happening in layout.server. So they kind of move things around and now we specifically have that locale. So big thanks to Halfer and, and definitely check out uh, type safe i18n, which is the library we're using um, uh, for internationalization. But uh, yeah, big thanks to them. And hopefully I'm saying your name right, right? Halfer, Ivan, Ivan Halfer, thank you, <laughs> big thanks. So we merged that in, it worked just fine. Uh, now, we're, now we're doing good stuff. Uh, this was, an issue opened up by or couldn't that just mentioned our contributing guides were slightly off uh, and, and they were right. So now if you're getting this project set up locally, if you look in the contributing markdown file, um, uh, we added, we updated the bash command. Yeah, so they didn't make a PR. They were just like, hey, fix this. And so we fixed it. So we just made made sure that new developers know that they need to run this command whenever they're, they're getting started. So thank you or couldn't for opening that issue. Um, and then uh, American 2050 opened an issue because we were using uh, the wrong library. Uh, I think uh, they mentioned that this happened since we installed it. So we, we were using a library for icons. If you look in our homepage, uh, we have a button that has a YouTube icon on it. And before we were using this library, Tabler Icons Svelte, but uh, the package is no longer supported and points us over here instead. Um, so... We removed that dependency, installed this dependency instead, and it works basically the same way. The name of the icon changed slightly, but uh, I'm glad we caught this now because if we had started building the app and we had lots of icons, it would have been a pain to fix in the future. Um, so thank you to American 2050 for, for opening that issue. Then we got into setting up ESLint. So when we generated our, our Svelte app initially, uh, we did choose ESLint in Prettier, so it generated the ESLint config for us. Uh, but there are a few more things we wanted to add. Um, so we added the Prettier plugin, which basically combines ESLint and Prettier. So for instance, if I have uh, an issue that would have been solved by Prettier, uh, now that shows up as a linter error. So uh, before you would not you would not have seen a red squiggly. Uh, you would have just run format document with Prettier, and then it. Uh, well, that didn't work. <laughs> if I, uh, I guess it, it just put it on the new line like that. Okay, I guess it kind of did work because it put it on the next line. This isn't the best example. Um, 
But now if we have a formatting error, it actually shows up as a linting error. So like this is a formatting error, but it now shows up as a linting error. And when I run ESLint fix all auto fixable problems, it also fixes the prettier issue. So I actually don't have to manually run prettier. I can just run ESLint and it handles all of the prettier rules. Uh, so that was handled by the uh, prettier plugin that we installed, which was great. Uh, and then we wanted to get uh, linting working inside of Svelte files. And initially it wasn't working. So I would have code like this and we wouldn't see the red squigglies. But we found out the main reason that was happening is because we did not have Svelte specifi specified in our ESLint validate array. So we wanted to make, make sure that ESLint is looking at Svelte files. Once we added this, then all of our linter errors could be fixed inside of Svelte files. So we fixed that as well. Um, and also we changed the Svelte parser that we were using. So if you generate an app using, uh, if you generate a Svelte kit app using their default config for ESLint, it uses Svelte ES, ESLint Svelte, ESLint plugin Svelte 3 is the one that it uses. But we found this one and it works better <laughs> for, for what we were trying to do. Uh, if you if you read their readme, they talk about why you would use this one over this the the one that uh, the Svelte Kit app comes with. But uh, we we look through their docs, we figure out how to configure it, and uh, essentially, whenever ESLint comes across a Svelte file, it needs to run it through the Svelte ESLint parser, which is provided by this ESLint plugin Svelte package. So we set all of that up as well, and then lastly, we also wanted to to integrate Airbnb uh, config rules. So. If you're not familiar, uh, Airbnb uh, ha employs a lot of JavaScript engineers and TypeScript engineers, uh, and they have come up with essentially a style guide for JavaScript. So they say things like uh, when you write an arrow function um, or when, when you write an anonymous function, you should use arrow functions instead of regular functions. Um, and I like the rules that the Airbnb config provides. So I wanted to add those to my project. So the ESLint Airbnb base config has all of the rules that they've defined, but now makes them available as the ESLint rules. And so we installed those two things, uh, the Airbnb base and then Airbnb uh, TypeScript. Um, so now all of those rules that, that they like to adhere to are now uh, applied to our files whenever they're getting linted. So for example, let's say I had an array of like one, two, three, and I wanted to reduce that. Um, so we have the sum and we have the value and then um, we have, let's say I want to return sum plus value. There are a couple of things wrong with the code that I've written. I mean, the code will work. This is valid JavaScript. This is valid TypeScript. But what's wrong is some of the formatting. So uh, part of, of, and I guess these are pretty rules, is that I should have spaces here. So that fixes that. Um, but then this is actually a rule defined in the Airbnb config that says, hey, if you only have a single line in your arrow function, you should use an implicit return. I guess also, if I try to use uh, the function keyword here, that's also giving me a linter error that says, hey, you should use arrow functions. So now if I run ESLint fix all auto fixable problems, it automatically turns that into an arrow function with an implicit return. Um, so those rules are defined in the Airbnb config, and now we have those rules combined with prettier rules to get formatting and, and linting. Uh, but what's nice about that is other developers in my code base, if they decide to use the function keyword instead of an arrow function, um, they're going to see a red squiggly to know that that's, that's our preferred, preferred way of doing things. So we added these configs. Um, yeah, so not only does it enforce it, it can automatically fix it because it is an auto-fixable problem. Not all, not all ESLint issues are auto-fixable, but that one in particular is auto-fixable. All right, uh, there's some other settings in here. Honestly, if you go watch the stream, <laughs> we, we did a lot. Uh, after we got all of these configs set up and working together, we did have to disable and modify some of the rules uh, because Svelte does certain things uh, that... Uh, we need to disable the rules for so like no param reassign if we look like in our in our back end hooks uh here we do assign to the parameter here because the values you set here get passed through to your other uh, uh routes and middlewares so this would throw a linter error because we were modifying uh the parameter that's passed to this function uh, and so we just disable that rule because that's going to happen all over the place uh, and then and there's a few other things that we disabled uh, but we went through, we we disabled everything, and we, and we got it going. Um, 
So we got all these plugins installed, we got everything working together, and, and some more modifications we needed to make were also to the TS config. So in our TS config, um, we wanted to include uh, these configuration files. So like a CJS file, and then also like any TypeScript or JavaScript file in the root. Uh, typically, these are ignored by the linter because they're just config files, but it's still code. So I still wanted ESLint to run even on these config files. So like if I have formatting errors in here, I want ESLint to be able to auto fix that. So in order to do that, I needed to tell uh, TypeScript that it should be looking at these files as well. Uh, so we essentially had to modify the includes here. And then inside of Svelte, there's some aliases set up. So if you look at, for example, uh, this component here, it's importing from $lib, but that actually is an alias to source lib. Uh, and so we needed to inform ESLint about that. So uh, we have these paths defined in our TS config, but then in our ESLint config, we also had to install uh, an import resolver, which essentially uses the... Uh, paths option from your TS config, but now those can be used by uh, ESLint as well. So now ESLint knows that when it comes across this, it actually is pointing to a to an inner directory. So we did have to set up that as well. Um, I will mention there's one error we were not able to fix, and if you know how to fix it, please open a pull request or open an issue uh, detailing how how you did it. Um, but specifically in Svelte, there is this magic dollar sign app thing and it's not the same thing as dollar sign lib i mean it sort of it sort of is but dollar sign lib uh corresponds to the lib folder in our source directory dollar sign app is actually an alias to uh the app dollar sign app forms module inside of this ambient type uh type definition file and we, for the life of us, we could not figure out how to create that alias for uh, ESLint to, to use. Um, you can see that we have two, these two definitions here, which technically should work, but they're not working. We still get this error here that says unable to resolve path to module. This specifically is an ESLint rule, though. Like TypeScript is still working just fine and can find this file just fine because of how TypeScript is configured. But we could not figure out how to tell ESLint where that specific thing is. So if you know how to fix that, please let us know. For now, we're just going to disable it. Uh, I don't because this is the only spot that we're using it. Eventually, we might be using it in multiple places, so we would want to figure out how to fix it. But for now, we haven't fixed that. Lastly, we also set up the Prettier plugin Tailwind CSS. And uh, this is a Prettier plugin that automatically sorts our Tailwind definitions. So um, for instance, if I have my Tailwind classes defined like this. If I run format with prettier, it's going to sort them in a predictable order. Um, so you can read through through their readme on, on the what the specific order is and why it does that. Um, but it has a lot of benefits, especially for pull requests. Like if one developer adds a new CSS class to the list, because these are now auto-sorted, um, it's going to be really easy to tell which, which CSS class was added or removed. Now, we tried to get this integrated with ESLint, like it would be really nice if we got a little red squiggly uh, in our editor when these are out of order. But right now, the ESLint plugin for that doesn't work with Svelte. So we're forced to use the Prettier plugin. So we have this Prettier plugin, uh, we have it configured here in our Prettier RC. Um, and that means not only do we need to run linting, we also need to run the Prettier format. Uh, but the prettier format that we're running is specifically just to order, organize these um, CSS class names. Hello there, uh, future CJ here. Uh, I actually got this working. So you can see now I have a red squiggly in my editor whenever my Tailwind classes are out of order. And I can just run ESLint fix all auto fixable problems, and that will fix the issue. So I don't have to run prettier format separately from ESLint fix all auto fixable problems. So that's pretty great. Um, I don't know exactly why it got fixed. Essentially, I updated all of my dependencies and it just started working. Uh, so I use this package called npm upgrade, which does, gives you an interactive uh, upgrade of all of your packages. I updated everything to the latest. It probably has something to do with the latest version of Prettier Plugins Felt. Now it's able to like detect things better, but yeah, it's working. So uh, now I don't have to run Prettier separately from ESLint. I can just run ESLint, fix a lot of fixable problems, and it catches those issues. Um, also, you can take a look. I've updated all of the scripts in the package.json. So 
the lint script now only has to run ESLint. It doesn't have to run Prettier. Uh, we have these other scripts. So you technically can do a Prettier check if you want to. Uh, and then we have lint fix, which will actually fix the uh, auto fixable issues. And then format fix, which will fix the auto fixable uh, Prettier formatting issues. Uh, so that's all I got for you. Uh, I'll see you later. So now that we had our ESLint config and our Prettier config and everything set up, we now needed to have some task that could run for that. So we specifically set up the lint task, which first runs Prettier check. So this uh, does not overwrite files. This just runs Prettier to see if there are any formatting errors. And if there are, it will return an error. So that's first step. Second step is run ESLint itself uh, to see if there are any errors. So we have that task there. Um, and then we also have the format check task. Now, there are these two other tasks which you can you can use locally, which will actually overwrite files. So if you do lint fix, not only will that lint the files, but if it finds errors that are auto fixable, it'll automatically fix those two. We don't want this by default, which is why we have a command where you can run that if you if you really want to. And then similarly, we have another command which runs prettier, but also overwrites the files with the formatting. So we have all of these tasks which we can now run. So if I run npm run lint, that's going to... Uh, check everything with Prettier and then check everything with ESLint. And if it doesn't throw out any errors, we know we're good to go. So that's awesome. Now I want it so that if I make a change locally, these tasks should run before allowing someone to make a commit. And we're doing that with Husky. So we installed Husky as a dev dependency. And now in our directory, we have a dot Husky folder with a pre-commit file. Uh, and we're saying run npm run lint before allowing someone to commit. So if I have a, a linter error in one of my files, let's say I'm missing a semicolon. And now let's say I try to make a commit. So th this is stage, I'm gonna commit this. Uh, this should fail. So pre-commit hook exited with code one. Did you forget to run prettier? So basically this is failing, so the commit didn't even happen. You can see that we're, we're still staged here. Um, Cool, so now, now we're back to normal, but that's what pre-commit hooks will give you. When somebody is working on the code locally, it's gonna run npm run lint before allowing them to commit. Now you can skip the pre-commit hooks. There is a way of not running this and just allowing the commit to happen. And you might do that locally if you have like a work in progress commit where you know that it's not gonna pass the linter because you still have work to do. So yeah, you can, you can ignore it, but I like that it has one extra check so that people make sure that they run this stuff before making a pull request. So I don't have to look at it if there are things that, that need, to, need to be fixed. Yeah, so dash dash no verify is, is what you could be using. All right, that's pretty much it. Today was all about configs and settings and everything else. Oh, 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 last thing, we also added this. So now when you pull the repo down, um, it has some default settings for you. So it should start linting your Svelte files, but it, it will also suggest extensions for you to install. So if you have VS Code locally and you open this up, we have this list of extensions that we use. So we have the ESLint extension, Prettier, the Svelte extension, uh, the Tailwind extension, and the Prisma extension. So when you pull this code base down and you open it up in VS Code, it's gonna tell you, hey, the maintainers of this project suggest that you install these extensions, and then it'll have like a one-click way of you installing those extensions. So uh, again, today was all about configs and also like developer experience. So we have pre-commit hooks, we have linters, we have formatters, and we have recommended extensions. Things, things are good. Yeah, and like America 2050 is mentioning, uh, we also moved my file explorer to the right-hand side. That has nothing to do with listed, but I'm liking it. I'm like, I'm liking my editor over on the right. Uh, so that's it. That's, that's it. that's it for today. No, no new uh, features or anything like that. It's all about configs and developer experience, all that good stuff. Uh, thank you for watching this. Um, if this was useful to you or any of my other videos were useful to you, definitely check out coding.garden slash support. It has links to all of the ways that you can support me. You can become a patron, a YouTube member, a Twitch sub, a GitHub sponsor, or uh, visit the various sites for merch um, because uh, I'm supported by viewers like you, so I don't take any corporate sponsors. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, please uh, support me in some way. All right, that's it. That's all. Hopefully I see you in the next one, which will be next Friday. Uh, until then, be well. We'll see ya.